dang it. I need to hurry up and get home. Viewer takeover is almost on. And I definitely, definitely don't want to miss that intro. But more importantly, I, I don't want to hit any of these guardrails and mess up this new paint job that I've been working on. Because if I did that, Brian and AJ and Dave would all be very disappointed. Very disappointed. And I, and I can't have that. Or at least... At least Brian and AJ will be disappointed. Dave's laptop probably won't be working right. And he's not even going to be in the feed. I guess you'll have to catch it on the replay. Viewer takeover! Happy viewer takeover for me and this little game cat. Can you give me a meow meow? Meow 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 meow. Meow meow meow. Guess not. This is Viewer Takeover, where we film every Monday night and we bring it to YouTube every Tuesday as Viewer Takeover. That's this right here, whenever we get around to editing it, whenever we get around to uploading it. My name is Brian Paul from this channel, without parole, and these guys with me, as always. David from Dave Station VR, all the way in the far left of the screen. And Hello, sir. <laughs> hey, yeah, see, at this point, I don't know if you're waiting for us to say something anymore, because sometimes you just hop on to the next one. Sometimes you wait. Sometimes so I, I anticipate. to decide there. Yeah, it's so, all your fault. Sometimes I anticipate that there's not going to be a quick reaction, so I just like move right along. And, uh, and now, Fair enough. but yeah, but now I'm keeping you guys not in the know. Okay. And that guy right here in the middle is AJ from PSVR Underground. I was waiting for you to go underground. Wait, and speak now. <laughs> underground that's what i should say i should say i should say and that's dave speak now yes yes should have some formal entry <laughs> what a horrible introduction uh guys uh, <laughs> uh what we like to do here on viewer takeover is thank a bunch of people and the first person we want to thank is david ballard for that fantastic yes. viewer takeover introduction that was fantastic i knew you'd like that beautiful one. stuff beautiful i really stuff. loved it and look guys look I, there's like several different reasons that i love that one but one of them by the way, what the hell car was that, David? Please put a comment down below and let us know what car you were driving because I want to unlock that because that looked amazing. But that is Gran Turismo Sport for everyone who didn't know. Look how good that looked. You guys not agree that looks amazing? That's that's yeah. one of the levels that was added later on. It made like, me want to go back and play it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It, it yeah. looks it looks amazing. Luckily, I'm not a graphics horror, and that's not the only thing that matters to me when I play video games. So, you know, what are you going to do? That's why I didn't make the top correct. 25, AJ. That's why I didn't make the top 25. It should have. It should have. Huh? Well, David Ballard showed you why. You had the chance to save that game, but you chose catch and release, my friend. You chose catch and release. It's true. <laughs> we love catch and release around here. Even though I it's do. a fishing game. They're both my babies. Great games. Great games. Uh, David Ballard, thank you so, so very much for that awesome introduction and sharing your kitty cat at the end. Uh, could, no. Couldn't get that fucker to meow, though, could you? <laughs> no. <laughs> couldn't even get him to smile either. <laughs> yeah, they never do what you want, man. Oh. That was not amused. No, but I was amused at David's meowing. Meow, 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 meow. I, uh, I laughed out loud. Actually, really good. both Dave Station and I laughed out loud really hard nice. when he uh, mentioned his laptop not working. You know, is any yeah, second right nice. now, I expect good it roast. to go down. It'll be fine. It'll it's be good. fine. Excellent. Keep, keep the roast coming, guys. The good thing is this is not a live show, so we'll figure it out. Hey, uh, if, if you guys want to introduce next week's viewer takeover, well, there's none in the cube, as always. Uh, that was the last one we had, so make sure you send your short, sweet, seductive, sexy viewer takeover wow. introduction to withoutparole at gmail.com. But remember, it's a Gmail account. You can't really send me big files. So, as Jeremy says, if it doesn't fit in the inbox, consider yourself lucky. David, however, is not the only person we want to thank this week. We also want to thank these people. These people down here. These people who went to patreon.com slash 
games. games. They're the ones giving us a dollar or more every single month. And for that, we thank you so much. It's a tough time for everybody. A lot of people are like out of a job or waiting to go back to work. And so it's a tough time financially. So for anyone out there who is able to support us, we thank you very, very much. And anyone who isn't, isn't able to, we, you know, we hope that you get back on your feet yeah. soon. Thank you. Or just play Job Simulator. There you go. Sure. That's very tone deaf, AJ. Very yeah. tone deaf. Perfect. <laughs> We're going to get comments about that one. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but, the, but the Patreon supporters, these lovely people down here are not the only people we want to thank. Are they, AJ? No, sir, they are not. We have two new Game Cats that we want to welcome to the Game Cat Dojo. Um, these are people that change their name on YouTube mm -hmm. to something Game Cat. They incorporate Game Cat into their name creatively or just however they want. And the way you can make sure when you do that, you just put hashtag Game Cat. And that is just another way you can show support and allegiance to this awesome, awesome channel, PSVR Without Parole, and become one of us. Starting with Joshua, the scientist Game Cat. Hmm. Bing. Man. That's that's cool, man. We have a scientist now. We do. Thank goodness, because like I, I mean, we 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 kind of need when when we finally get that compound uh, out in Montana, uh, where we all like you know gather around and, and, and create the cult. Montana. We're got we're gonna need we're gonna need the scientists. <laughs> yeah, we're going someplace better than Montana. No offense to Montana, uh, but they won't find us. There. Yeah, we're, we're going off no the grid. Coronavirus in Montana, bro. <laughs> we're going off the grid. He's like the Donatello of Game Cats. We also have another one. Alan Gore, Game Cat. Bing. Do you guys hear the Bing when we read these two? I, I, I can't I not hear the Bing, bing. after the name. I, nice. I, I, I especially hear it when you go Bing every time I say bing. that. Do you think Alan Gore and Morin Gore are related? <laughs> oh, maybe. Wonder. Um, I don't know. It, I was trying to. I was trying to figure out what maybe what Alan Gore could be, but I don't know. Gore, whole, Gore's a, cool in horror movies. So. It's a whole other sect of Game Cat. We have Attack Cats. We have uh, ex Game Cat Extraordinaires. Now we have right. Gore, Gore Game Cats. This is just the fucked up Game Cat that we send out that just like messes people up pretty bad. There we go. But Brian, what's the point of this show? I have no fucking idea anymore, AJ. No idea. Uh, but you know what we try to do, I guess what, what we what the, this what we try to create a semblance of here is a question and answer form where you guys uh, send us comments through either hash by putting hashtag viewer takeover in the comments below or joining our Discord. You'd want to do that anyway. Join the Discord. The link is in the description and in the hashtag viewer takeover channel. You can leave us questions there. We we at the very last second minutes before we film, uh, we scour both of those things and we. Pick our favorites uh, or the ones that pop up immediately and then uh we put a show together and we try to answer them for you so uh who dave why don't you uh, take us away with the very first viewer takeover question of the week not a problem brian this one comes from scyther the game meowth lots of pokemon in that name i like it this came from discord where we have a channel uh, hashtag viewer takeover channel which you guys should all go hang out in and he says very short and to the point picks for most overrated PSVR games. So this was funny. He posted this in general, actually. And I oh. he asked a question. He was like, why don't you guys do like a top list in uh, you know, for, for like overrated games? Like I wanna I wanna hear, you know, your guys' most overrated games. And I was like, if only there's a way mm -hmm. that you could ask us a question and have us <laughs> answer it. No, but anyways, I directed him and was like, dude, just put a hashtag viewer takeover. Just remember, guys, if you ever want to ask a question. Hashtag viewer takeover. Ask us anything. We, it could start fights between us. You could literally make us try to choke each other out. It doesn't take you. don't even have to make us try. Yeah, yeah. It's no. spontaneous. It's not that hard. We're generally so, at each other's throats like all the entire show. Thing, it's a good thing we're not all in the same room when we do it. That. It is. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, I mean, you know, this one, I, I realize this is going to be a controversial maybe subject. Not and, controversial. But, I think I think we all agree that Moss can stick a tiny little oh, mouse dick. Yeah. Yeah, I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're not going there. Um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I I think it's a fun way to uh, to you know ask a question. So what do, what do you guys think? Yep. What, what's overrated? In Moss, your Moss is so fucking overrated. It's not funny. Yeah, that's not your pick, Brian. That's not the pick we discussed. I, you know, but but <laughs> I, 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 I realized it would be a way better <laughs> conversation. Oh my god! I'm so glad you were thinking you and say that you're wrong. No, I I, lo I love Moss, but I do think that it's I do think it's a tiny little mouse dick overrated. 
Um, no, that's not that's not my answer. In fact, my answer, I think, is probably going to be pretty clear. Uh, this is a game I got death threats about when I first reviewed it uh, because people have disagreed with me so heavily. Uh, Arizona Sunshine. And I got to tell you guys that I'm very, very happy to be on the right side of history with this one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right? It took, it took a couple of years, but people come up finally went, oh, yeah, no, this game isn't very good, as it turns out. This is actually kind of messy. Um, and that's after they fixed it. Like, but Dave, Dave, you and I were there. Like, I Oh, my God, yeah. No, my, the it. title of my review was Hype Train Derail. <laughs> like it's i was not happy with it i yeah. didn't like it very much it was such a mess but on day one that, you on that thank goodness um you know vertigo jaywalkers they were able to patch it uh quite a bit now it's like playable uh but man like on day one that horde mode it was it was basically broken and only had one map you couldn't even walk out from underneath the tent i mean it was just an absolute mess now it's got some pretty cool horde maps um but overall the i don't for they've never lowered the price when it's on sale for like 12 bucks, I'm like, yeah, that's the appropriate price for this game. And it should have been yeah. like a $15, $20 game to begin with. But man, right. for $40, like someone over there is having a fucking laugh. Yeah. Um, absolutely. Yeah, it still has, I mean, to be fair, it still has some bugs too. Oh, like, no, there's absolutely. There's still like, there's there's still does, like yeah. invisible walls and this and that. And it's just janky overall. But but there is some fun to be had, especially with co-op. Um, absolutely. So, absolutely. So it's, it's I've definitely come around on it as well. But I still don't regard it as like one of the even close to like the top. 20 top 30 games you wouldn't find it in my top 50 man it is in i mean you mentioned multiplayer and walking around in multiplayer just walking the other person like i mean it's the yeah. funniest fucking thing oh, of all it, time it, watching yeah, your co-op yeah. partner like you, you can tell this game wasn't designed with full locomotion in mind right and so like you're the, the character that you're standing next to is like just totally fucked up all the time like they're not even moving across the screen smoothly it's it's ridiculous but I yeah. am looking. That being said, I am really looking forward to their next game oh, uh, after the fall. So much. Yeah, I, I have high expectations for that, as well as uh, Walking Dead Saints and Sinners. So hopefully we get some some really, really good zombie quality, high quality zombie games pretty yeah. soon. No, I, I have to, I have yeah. total faith in, in Vertigo that they have you know learned a thing or two about making video games right. over the last three years. And, uh, yeah. and you know, I, I think. <sighs> I think after the fall, I think I think that kind of has everything that would have made uh, Arizona Sunshine a good game rather than just like a, a painfully average game. Right. Um, and I'm looking forward to that one too. But we talked about enough about that. What about you guys? Um, so mine might also upset some people. Um, it's not that it's a bad game by any means. And I, I don't know, it's probably as good as Arizona Sunshine at least. But Apex Construct... Everybody seems to love this game. Apex, like when I hear someone say they've played it, usually they're like, oh my God, it's so good. Like, it's like when people are vegan and they just have to tell you about it. You know, it just, I don't know. I don't understand the the love behind it. Like, it's a cool game. It's fine. But when it came out, it just didn't ever grab me. And there were so many mechanics that I thought were really frustrating that they've, they've fixed a little bit of, similar yes. to Arizona Sunshine. But it is really just like a bunch of, oh, go find this key card and then shoot an arrow. And like, I don't know, I've had enough shooting arrows in VR. And in general, I've had enough finding key cards. <laughs> so I don't know. No, it didn't didn't really do too much for me. It looks great. The art design is cool. The environment is very nice, but didn't do that I, much. I really like the world and like the storytelling of the game. But the way it all comes together, I wasn't crazy about. And I really, really didn't like. I mean, it does have really good bow and arrow combat. But it's like that being said, I didn't like that there was just like one to three different types of enemies <laughs> the whole time. Yeah, yeah. Like, like literally, the like the the final boss is literally like the middle boss of the game again with like more of the spiders that you've been fighting the entire <laughs> game, and it's just like, come on, man! Like, so from a gameplay perspective, as good as the bow and arrow stuff was, yeah, I, I kind of agree with you. But it does do do some really cool things as well. Yeah. yeah, no, I, like you said, I like the environment stuff a lot, uh, the way it's designed. But I don't know if I would say the story is good. It's very boilerplate, like like the voice acting, and the mother, world. And there's a good one and a bad <laughs> one. And they're, you know, evil AIs or whatever. It's just like really boilerplate. Like this... anybody could have written this concept. And especially it's kind of hackneyed, like the whole father mother thing. I'm tired of that kind of shit out of that. Like, the whole Tell thing kind of. Stuff. The whole thing kind of like the way it's presented makes me kind of want to go to sleep. And I mean that like not in like, a, it is boring. Not, <laughs> like not in a bad way. Like, oh, my God, this game sucks. Like, put me to bed. No, like, no, like it's like the voices are like, you know, very 
deep, deep and, and soothing when they talk and it's this and it's that <laughs> and this is how it's presented. I'm like, this is what I want to yeah. hear when I put my head to a pillow. And then combine that with sort of the slow paced exp- exploration. And when you're looking around for key cards and stuff, you, you add that all together and you're like, man, I'm like this, you, you know, I, I need something to kind of to, to, to shake to shake things up, to, to shake me awake a little bit. Uh oh. Oh, AJ, <laughs> you looked like you were frozen, and Dave has been missing in action for. Uh, <laughs> we'll give it a second for seconds here. All right, AJ, what uh, what game do you think is pretty overrated? Um, I actually had like a list of nine, and some of these were going to be fun. Some of these were going to piss a lot of people off, but I'm I just decided to go with the one that I just feel like is overrated. It's a game that I don't think should be. It's it's on like the top ten most downloaded PSVR games every single month, and mm. I don't understand why. And that game is drunken bar fight um it's Dude, that's so... like my most popular video too everybody right. wants to hear about that game or play it or something i don't know why i feel like you, I, you have, have like almost a hundred thousand views on that one don't you it's like ninety thousand. yeah it's, it's crazy. like ninety thousand. like it's look, way more than it. I, I post new videos i get, I get like 300 views man i get it you drunken walk around you can slap stuff it's silly it's got stupid ragdoll physics but it's just like it's not a good game like it's and it's like people really love it. I think I, I get asked about it like so often. Like, how's Drunken Bar Fight? I'm like, no. Like, that's like asking how's Rage Room, but nobody even knows Rage Room exists. Um, I'm glad they don't either. But but yeah, it's just it's a couple levels. There's like um, yeah, there's just like no point to it. It's just one around and punched up. It's also a game where like like people break a lot of TVs playing this game, and it's just like <laughs> not one that I want to recommend. I think the controls are kind of funky on it too um like the controls aren't good the, the graphics really aren't well, that no, it's great like, it's like playing co-op or something it's like really i think that's part of the design though that it's really bad Just you know compare it, drunken bar fight to co-op oh come on you, you think it's intentionally <laughs> I mean, it's, poorly implemented the controls i think some parts of it are stupid on purpose Maybe. i gotta say man sure. drunken bar fight does have me kind of looking forward to gorn a little bit more because i feel like that will actually be like a better version of it sure you know um like something a little bit more interactive stuff a little bit more silly fun a game that is a little bit more self-aware and you know drug of our fights not the, it's not the worst game ever but but man it it makes a killing and i don't think like it it's literally like my friend will not play it's so hard to get him to play psvr after making him play that game and i was like I don't want to ever I don't want to ever show anybody this game again. Um, well, the funny thing I think that goes into Drunken Bar Fight, which um, is going to bring me. I just realized this to the game that I should have picked for the most overrated game. Five Nights at Freddy's VR, which is totally the most overrated game. Way more than Apex. But anyways, it's a good thing that's going to start a fight. It's a good thing I'm only on my yeah. first cup of coffee, man, because uh, otherwise, <laughs> okay. otherwise, I'd be... no, we, we don't have to get into that. But I think the okay. similar thing as to why it's so well known and popular is that there is sort of like a, a YouTube ness to it. And I think there True. are videos out there with like millions and millions. Yeah, and that millions Dave of Station VR. Uh, he's no, 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 he's no, killing no, think... it with Drunken Bar Fight. I think a lot of the big YouTubers have a video of Drunken Bar Fight, so it's on people's radar. Like, right. I think big streamers have a tendency to play not the normal VR games that we're checking out, but like the stuff that can be meme worthy or like stupid or silly right. or off the wall or whatever, just to get a reaction right. out of people. But just playing so it I on think, your own, it's terrible. <laughs> yeah, but I think that's why. So same with Five Nights at Freddy's, of course. Um, but <laughs> I think that's why people are so into it. Like there's this upswell of interest because it's a game you've seen, uh, you know, people play and it looked silly and stupid and fun. Yep. And so it pushes that a lot further than it would if nobody knew about it. You know, it wouldn't be a big deal. Yeah, I can totally see that. And, and I think and I think that's where a lot of the hyper Gorn is coming from, too. Uh, you know, it's like, oh, absolutely. Yeah, 100 percent. Yeah. 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 The funny thing is, these are games that people like freaked out about on place or PC VR years previously and right. then we're like hey let's get a big stupid streamy kind of meme game um you know two years later when we've got shit right. like blood and truth i don't know i mean okay disclaimer once again these are just our opinions and this was a question that was asked so if you're angry out there we're not totally trying to shit on these games but yeah. um maybe a little bit i mean <laughs> kind of shitting on moss a little 
Brian doesn't care about your feelings. Five nights at Freddy's. I do, okay? Yeah. I care. I care about your feelings. I care about your feelings. I just, you know, I, I want to let you know that you're wrong about them. <laughs> and then, you, and I, and then, you know, you, general, you should yeah. try some better games because there's so many better games. No, no, I don't, I don't give a fuck what you that's, like. That, I think that's what makes me mad is that, yeah, there's so many, like, things that I classify as a better game but that when, these sometimes get me When month up. after month goes by and, you know, and like you said, there are so many better games. Like, you know, what? what where the is, amount of times I have to recommend, like the persistence, or okay. s- like Skyrim, or you know, even to the top or something. It's just like, oh, okay, where, like how many times do I got to recommend this? Where are these reasonably priced games on the sales charts every single month? Shadow Legend was this like we hadn't gotten a good game in so long, and then we get Shadow Legend, and we're like, this game is amazing. It's going to be on our next top twenty list. We love it, and you know, I played played the crap out of it until there was no more to play. And and then I looked at the sales charts the next month and it was like nope, nope just not there. Yeah. It was like yeah. oh, I mean yeah. people complain about games being too short and then they they're like no this game's like too long like like Shadow Legends is too short four hours no but then Skyrim they're like no it's I don't I don't have that kind of time it's like I, I think the <laughs> like, main problem I hope still different right people. Now is, there's no <laughs> mainstream coverage of any of this stuff so how would anybody know about it unless True. they sought out right. like you have to be sitting in the PlayStation Store being like. I just want to buy something new and interesting that I don't know about. And then I'll look it up if it seems interesting in the store and you find a YouTube review, if it exists, you know, that sort of thing. Um, I think if this stuff was on the radar of major uh, video game media, you know, like Kotaku, IGN, stuff like that, um, in the same way they cover other indie games that are coming out on flat screen, Mm -hmm. uh, a lot more of these devs would have success releasing their shit and actually get up on the charts because at this point, it's just the big hitters that you know when you get a PSVR. Like, okay, Skyrim, right. Blood and Truth, Astrobot, Resident Evil. And then right. people just, like, stop at that. They're like, oh, I played all the good games. Yeah. Well, and that's why, these, that's why these streamers that we're talking about are actually doing some good for PlayStation VR. Because they're, you know, even though they're, they're right. having a laugh at uh, Drunken Bar Fight or... Uh, or Gorn, that kind of stuff. You know, maybe they're promoting some of the the lesser VR games, but at least they're drawing attention to games right. that maybe you haven't heard, would, yeah. would have never heard of well, before. And the, at least they're the, VR games. The downside of that, I would say, the flip side of it is that um, the games that are conducive to that type of coverage from those sort of outlets, those people on YouTube or whatever, um, are not the good games. Like separation is unmemeable. There is no way PewDiePie could stream separation right. and not lose a shitload of subscribers. And he probably wouldn't say it was good. So what I'm saying is like there's all these games that are meaningful that have nobody out there championing them unless you go out of your way to find a right. niche YouTube channel that is championing them. But you have to do that work yourself. There's no established organization telling you about this stuff. So it's I think once we get that in place, once that catches up with the actual market and what's out there, um, then, you know, I guess they need the clicks to get people to get on the website. So I do agree with you. I do agree with you with everything you said. However, I do think that what these guys are doing, I think a majority of the viewers for these channels are, are a younger audience. And I think that VR isn't really roping in a younger audience. It seems like until recently, uh, everybody who was picking up a PlayStation VR, for the first like two or three years we were covering PlayStation VR, everybody that was playing it seemed to be 30 plus. It, it was just, a, it was an older generation thing. It was all these people oh. who were waiting for VR their whole lives. And now these other YouTubers are like managing to get a younger crowd interested in VR, even if it's yeah. not with the best games. I totally get it. No, I mean, it's, it's like, VR chat like a kid who's interested in VR knows Ethiopian knuckles but he's never heard of you know fucking blood and truth right is what I'm saying right well um, but then they so, but then they make their way over here we we find we, they're in, they're slowly entering our discord I, I see them sorry I see them in the comments suddenly and so like they're you know if they get a PlayStation VR headset with that one game that they saw another YouTuber play now they're looking for more and they do find this eventually uh, and so I think it's going to be good for the medium as a whole it's just going to take a little time for that element to actually gain some traction. Uh, I mean, I, I think that's true. And I think we're going a little too long. We should probably wrap it up pretty soon. But um, I would say... We can just do one question this week. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That'll be good. Yeah. Um, the, the only thing, though, is like the games that we're getting now on PSVR, even if they have that uptick, that's from somebody who did it on PC VR three years ago, two years ago, true. usually. And so I feel like there aren't current games that are coming out on PSVR that are getting that kind of day one push 
it's like these have been on PC in the environment for years and right. years and years. Everybody knows that they're like, you know, everybody knows drunken bar fight, whatever. So, but Dave, when's Gorn um, coming out? Why isn't when's what's Gorn's release uh, date? Dave, when's Gorn coming out? Dave. That's what I'm saying. If we focus too much on bringing these old games that were like silly and fun in 2016 or 2017 or whatever, yeah, like, right. um, I, I don't know if we should put as much excitement behind those as much hype as you know, new games that are not just some silly, uh, meme worthy thing. Anyways, that's, that's probably, probably a, enough for yeah, that's probably, probably a good uh, period to put at the end of that sentence. Uh, <laughs> let's move along to uh, Game Cats Fishing for Jelly Jolly Jellyfish. Oh, let's try that one. Jolly jellyfish. Game Cats Rail Fishing for Jolly Jellyfish. That's how you should have said it. And it comes from Viewer Takeover. Uh, so hashtag Viewer Takeover, hashtag Game Cat. What are some unnecessary additions you want for the possible PSVR 2? Discovering the home workout with Black's VR. Beat Saber, Spark, and Sprint Vector. I would love the workout counter from Box VR for all VR games so you could see what you did over the day, even if it was just smashing zombies and killing four with their limbs. Uh, the other would be speakers in each controller to have the ultimate 3D audio experience. So I, I like this question. Um, yeah, in, in and, I, and I like their suggestion too. I do like the, um, the workout counter, like the calorie counter. Of course, it's not like completely accurate, but it's kind of cool to see. The, uh, they did mention like, there was a patent before about like a heart rate monitor yeah. to like measure. Um, I, I kind of like that idea as well. Um, but guys, I think I have the ultimate answer. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on a second. Wait. While we're while we're talking about uh, Jolly Jellyfish's suggestion, I do want to reiterate something we said. Uh, let's keep the fucking controllers as inexpensive as possible. Like, right. Get, yes. Right. Let's keep the heart rate monitor out. Let's keep the speakers in in them out. Let's make them as inexpensive as possible because they're already gonna be expensive. And yeah, so, I mean, I use headphones anyways, so speakers well, and, and always have. I'll just throw this out there. Um, the speaker, but it's gonna on, have a speaker anyways, it's gonna oh, have that. Yeah, that's the speaker a, on the DualShock 4 has been around forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the speaker on the DualShock 4 doesn't like add, it doesn't create the ultimate audio experience, right? Right, it, it's just like no, it's a shitty <laughs> a pair of you want to turn off most of the time, yeah. like. It doesn't add anything useful, really, for the most part. The Quest has so, the Quest has a great uh, speaker system in it that doesn't that really creates some good 3D audio without the use of headphones. Um, and so, if, true, yeah. if, if we're talking about some kind of sound uh, upgrade for PSVR two, I would love if they implemented something like that because, like, it really requires n no headphones at all, and it sounds pretty damn good, to be honest. What? So, what's what's your guys' features? So. Obviously, everybody's asking for this. This has come up a bunch, so I'm going to take the obvious one since I'm going first. Mm -hmm. And that would be um, like a PS Home kind of thing where you have some kind of a different UI for VR where you're like in a living room or a space and you can have people thing. over. You can put your trophies up on the wall. Yeah. You can like look through your collection with a friend and be like, hey, what do you want to play? And like grab it off the shelf and it like loads up. Like this kind of shit would be really cool because... You know, Oculus... Um, the VR on, themes and stuff. Exactly, yeah. On the Quest, they're, it's a better than PSVR, but it's still not um, like what they do on the PC, which is where you can like visit people and decorate your apartment. And I think... I mean, I never really did much with Home on PS3, but that's what people say typically, that you know, it was like you had a space, you could have people over. It was a little half-baked, but it was cool. Yeah, but just something <laughs> like that concept, a, a different UI for VR that makes you feel like when you put the headset on, you're not just staring at a flat screen and waggling your moves to pick yeah. a game. Um, you're in a new area of your PS5, you know? That's a great pick. Get rid of that flat screen. Look at, like, the theater screen while yeah. you're in VR. Unless it's, okay. like, there's a decorated thing around that theater, you know? make spice, Spruce that up a little. To make it immersive. When I put on the yeah. headset, I should be, like, in the PS World's menu or something. You know, like, something that level of cool. Yeah, I like it. I'm going to I'm going to piggyback on what you're saying, Dave. Uh, and I think I think we've said this before when we talked about um, about home. Uh, but man, it because I was I was actually going to say the same thing. But I would I think that having an avatar and being able to really customize your appearance. Uh, and again, as you mentioned, the, your own like kind of like a apartment space or whatever, and kind of have it yeah. be this like consistent, cohesive world, uh, Oasis style, right? Um, but like, I want to customize my avatar. I want to like really make. I want to make Brian Paul in VR. Like, I want my. I want my guy to look like me. And uh, and so the thing that PlayStation Home did, and the way they kind of monetized it, even though it never really left beta, was that they sold p articles of clothing. Uh, and I think that mm -hmm. I think that microtransactions didn't really work in Home because it was 
kind of janky and no one like used it as much as they should have or they could have. Uh, but this is, you know, this is going to be my UI. And every time I drop into VR, it's like I'm going to see, you know, there's a mirror over there and I can check myself out and make sure my hair looks good and that kind of stuff. Um, I want, I'm going to, I will pay. I'll give you the microtransactions for this will absolutely work. You know, every week I'll buy a different shirt or I'll buy a different hairstyle or I'll buy something to kind of like just to have a unique look every time I drop into VR. Uh, and I, I think I think they could really monetize this. Uh, and you know they don't have to go crazy. As long as there's a as long as there's a mirror in there. <laughs> Absolutely. Without a mirror, yeah. there's not really a whole lot of a point. Well, there is a point because you're well, going to see other you. people, okay. other people, yeah. right? right? And you kind of want to show off your new look for everybody. Uh, no, for sure. And so I, I think I think this is a way that they could make it worthwhile to them because you know if I'm going to spend 99 cents every week or every two weeks, you know, like over the course of a few years, that's going to add up when you get you know hundreds of thousands of people doing the same thing. Uh, so hopefully they take advantage of that. The the so, only thing that I worry about, sorry, as far as that goes, I think Sony is going to lag behind Oculus and Facebook pretty heavily in that sort of like social interpersonal VR thing, um, because Facebook wants and is already developing stuff where like your avatar looks exactly like you from a face scan. And like when you talk, the mouth moves perfectly and it's like you're right. there in VR. And I've seen proof of concept of that stuff. And it's like, I think they're a lot more focused on that social aspect than Sony is. Um, I think we'll see. I from mean, what I've seen. I mean, yeah. Sony hasn't expressed any interest or said anything along those lines. I feel like they could have said, hey, we want to make VR a more social experience. On PS5, the UI is going to be such and such. Like, if they were thinking about this stuff, they could have easily communicated it. Um, with, uh, with, so I don't know. With having them really said nothing about PlayStation VR 2 other than that one line by Mark Cerny saying it's coming about a year after PlayStation 5 launch uh, for yeah. that Wired interview, they really said nothing. And so I, I think it's probably it's probably in their best interest to keep quiet in order to um, facilitate uh, to keep the PlayStation VR 1 sales moving. Um, you don't want to start. Well, no, I don't think of it as a, I don't think of it as a PSVR 2 thing. I think of it as a PS5 thing. Okay. Um, because, you know, there's got to be some incentive to be excited about. Well, the, the uh, PS4 is where because... all this social hub thing started. So it would see, you know, it would be nice to see it take the next step um, in just any way it can in regards to what you guys are talking about. Um, so I have, uh, I have something this, when, when Jolly Jellyfish said, uh, what are some unnecessary additions? I really took that to heart because I had something in mind <laughs> at first, like, you know, the, uh, party chat audio working for live streaming and stuff like that but um uh, a niche thing but that would be great true. but yeah um but i would love love to see what what's the number one thing you hear about when you see somebody playing is that you don't understand what it looks like what i'm seeing when i'm if i'm streaming something if somebody's watching on youtube or watching on their phone i'm always like guys i don't know what it looks like to you but this looks amazing and so I would love a spectator mode uh, option where you could either watch like with a VR headset, even like a, you know, a with with a watch from your PSVR, watch from some sort of thing to where it actually puts your like camera with like a 360 camera where your helmet is that doesn't move when you're moving, doesn't shake. And the person can literally be looking from your perspective, but like look around and see like stuff that's like right behind you, coming up behind you, um, can actually see the depth of what you're looking at, like what it looks like, how the scale of everything and the depth of it and and get a better sense of what the experience is like from your point of view. But it's important that it's like head is on a, like not swivel, but it's like you, you can look around freely from that person's perspective and you're basically just following along on their body. Yeah, that really does solve the motion yeah. sickness issue we've always talked about whenever this, this whenever this idea comes up. The only thing that you have to keep in mind there is like for, for what it's outputting, for what it's saving, for what it's streaming, mm. um, like the game isn't even rendering the stuff you're not looking at unless you're looking at it. You know, with most VR, there's a lot of stuff behind the scenes to make it so whatever you're looking at looks great, but they're not doing anything with the stuff you're not looking at until you look at it. You know what I mean? Right. And so I think that would be really difficult to achieve because it would have to render every possible angle of the whole thing you're looking at. And I think that's probably a little beyond the PS5's capacity, even though it's going to be a really strong machine. The one thing that I think in that vein would be really cool, though, it, 
okay, I don't think it's going to be capable of doing that, the PS5. Yeah. Um, and I don't think a YouTube service could handle... I mean, there aren't really, like, look around wherever you want full immersive VR, you know, 360 3D videos that you can just right. click around and put your headset on. Good anyways. Yeah, the, well, even the I mean, there are those videos... Good. Those, no, but three, those 360, a 360 things video exist, is but they, no, but, but a 360 video is that. not is not the same as watching right. somebody. True, uh, but um, what I think the cool thing would be is so there's got to be a cam report because the PSVR one has to be compatible with PS5, right? Yes. But if the PSVR two uses inside out tracking, then suddenly that camera becomes available for streaming stuff because go. they don't need that camera anymore. If it's still plugged in. Why not do like a mixed reality sort of situation where it shows yes. your body in the thing? Because that's a lot of people are like leaning well. towards that idea of like, how do you show off VR? Well, you show somebody in VR where what their hands are doing is represented in the world. And that's the view you're seeing. So you get a context for everything. And I think that's doable. Um, I don't know if they'll do it. I don't have any real expectation that they would, but it would really help show off, um, you know, from a streaming kind of perspective you know how yeah. cool this stuff is yeah that would be very can, cool you can see how silly we look in person yeah yeah right right i mean you can technically do that right now anyways with obs and stuff but well i would like it, the whole point is i would like to see all this integrated like more love and care and pushing the technology forward in terms of the psvr features yeah. um for like streaming and just everything sharing streaming all that the other thing i just thought of though is sort of that might not work the way people do that right now on PC requires a whole like cube of green screen right. and like multiple cameras and stuff. Right. And that's not going to be anything anybody has at home. So maybe that would not work. most people. No. I mean, no, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't nice have, have to be, yeah. it would look better with the green screen effect behind it. Um, yeah. I recently but... painted my entire living room green, so I'm good to go. No, you didn't. <laughs> no, but by PS5 time, absolutely. <laughs> like, I don't want to hang up green screens. I just want my whole apartment to be green. So it's like snap in, in a, and I'm keyed in. Yep. Yeah. Something, some way to show it, to show the gameplay, even if it's like another perspective, even if it's not necessarily the first person perspective or something yeah. like, you know, an option to show you your character in third person yeah. and then like show the world um, some way to better show that depth is all I'm saying. Yeah. It'd be great if you had like a, uh, on a you had a camera button uh, while you were streaming. So you could switch from what you were seeing to a third person view with, you see your avatar and, and everything else. And you see in the, in the there, it, what streaming is no longer what you're seeing. It, it is that third person perspective. This has been done in VR before actually rec room does this uh, on PC, right. not on P PlayStation, but on PC yeah. with rec room, you can do that and yeah. you can set up camera angles and stuff. So, I mean, All right. so it's doable. So I, it's that would be fun, man. I think that would make streaming a lot more fun to kind of just give a little yeah. bit more uh, interactive features. Yeah, just to just to be able to like, interact with your crowd a little bit better. That would be like, is hey, Dave dropping out or is he? I don't know. I, 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 like, I like to failing? I like to think that happens every time he gets bored. He's like, he's like, hold on a second, I've got something. Else I know. I feel like he just like stops listening yeah. and then just just goes to that mode. That works for me. And then and then comes back when he I, feels like it. Thinking that Dave is too I, important for us makes me wicked happy. And now you're muted, Dave. Wait, I was That's just no, hold on. You. Okay, hey, what's up? Hey, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you. All right, I just heard that I was too important for you guys. Yeah. Yes. It, that's the way it comes yeah, across, okay. and, I, and I enjoy that. <laughs> us peasants can deal. Yeah. This um, laptop just fucking sucks, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I uh, so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and tackle the uh, third question. It comes via. Woody the Bluebird today uh, mm. from the Discord says hashtag. Is that sorry? Today is from I just didn't copy and paste it. Oh, oh, okay, okay. I'm sorry. Woody, <laughs> yeah, I was like, I thought he was like he's always know, Woody the Bluebird today, not just today. Um, <laughs> so he says hashtag viewer takeover. Great top twenty show, guys. Thank you very much. One thing I thought was interesting was how the hype factor of games affects these lists. For example, in the previous version of the list, Golem was ranked fifth. Having just been released in the weeks leading up to the show, three months on, however, Golem dropped to 17th. Likewise, this time, AJ mentioned that he was considering putting Final Assault on the list, but very sensibly decided it was too soon to make that call. Conversely, older games that truly are quality, such as Skyrim, are gradually climbing the list as time goes on. Just wondered whether you guys have a view on this kind of stuff. 
I have so many. Of you I do actually. Stuff. Yeah, yeah I, I have several. I mean, you yeah. know, I think games just because a game comes out more recently, I don't think it it increases its chances of being on the list. But I think it can affect where it is on the list. If a game is really really good and we just got done playing it, then we're going to still be kind of high on it. And you know, the truth is, it doesn't even matter if the game is old or new. This is why I went back and played for the last couple months a whole bunch of games to try and keep my thoughts fresh on it um, because that does affect it. That's why Blood and Truth jumped back up. That's why Skyrim jumped back up because it's so easy to forget how amazing some games are. It's so easy to forget how amazing the experience is, but it also yeah, accounts for the longevity side, of the games. Sidebar, this is why we get stuff like Pinball and Battlezone on the list because of exactly what AJ just said. That's right. why those kind of left field things pop up. It's not so it's just not even just like newness hype. Right. It's like how fresh does it feel to each of us personally? Right. Yeah. You know, like But I, I like the idea of it because it keeps the list fresh. It keeps it it keeps it ever so changing and stuff because otherwise the requirement would be to play every single game uh before these lists come up. And that's just really hard to do. Um, but, but yeah, some yeah, games are going to jump up, to jump back down. Um, I, I like the idea that, you know, otherwise it'd just be the list and it would stay, but, but, you know, a game could be awesome, amazing, even like the first time you play it, but then you could go back later and then it's like, okay, like there's nothing new by coming back and revisiting this game while some other ones are like, they've had updates or, you know, they've they've expanded on the game or there's dlc um or just like it's like no this game is good to come back to you haven't seen everything there is to see or it's fun to replay again at some point well i think the the main like kind of comparison here uh that makes it seem not that unusual to me is like picture any gaming website's top uh switch games top ps4 games they update that on a running kind of basis so like at the bottom of it, they'll say, okay, update this day. We removed this game and we added this game. And hmm. some of that is due to a new game coming out that people are hyped about that just feels better at the time and it gets pushed up the list. But sometimes they aren't new games. Sometimes it's just a reappraisal of what is the best thing out right. here. And so I think people are used to the concept of a constantly updated list um, that doesn't necessarily just get updated by new things sometimes your opinions can change on the existing things or in in reaction to what's out there now you know yeah i think i think the the my takeaway from this question is that recency bias is being considered as a negative thing and i actually see recency bias as kind of a fun uh fun way to make the lists as, as you guys already kind of alluded to interesting i uh, make, make them different than the other if we were just making one top 20 list a year then I'd be like, okay, you know what? There's only going to be a couple of these in the entire span of the PlayStation VR's life, life, you know, lifespan, history, whatever. And so we need to make sure that they're really fucking correct, uh, you know, yeah. for, for and that. And the list could be outdated so fast, too. It's going to be outdated, in, like, the day after it can be outdated. If a new game comes out that's amazing. Yeah. I, I actually, I would, the only thing I, uh, my, my only regret about Final Assault was that, uh, was that I, if I had spent, the five hours that I wanted to like really diving into that game before the top 20 list, I would, I would not have for a second uh, considered keeping it off the list, but I just, I just didn't have right. time to play it. So, so it wasn't, it wasn't that recency bias was a concern for me. It was that I just didn't have time to play it. So the fact that yeah. we're doing this every three months is sort of a, he, here's a little snippet of what we were excited about three months ago and three months before that and three months before that, you know, and you can kind of see that bounce around on the list. And I think that's kind of fun. Uh, so I, I don't like recency bias being so, you know, so negative. Uh, well, I, I think we do it both ways, though, because so there's the recency bias of this is cool and exciting. And I've had a good chance to play it within the past week or two or month or whatever. But Sometimes the way things work out, we have a top 20 list that's like the week after a shitload of games came out right. that yeah. we might actually put on the list. And in that case, there is no real defensible way to say after one week, I can tell you that this is like the one of the top 20 games. And so I think we do a good job of self-regulating there because we didn't put Final Assault on there and, and stuff right. like that. Um, I think and I, had put, I had put a lot of time... Sorry, just I think there's occasionally these weird 
overlaps between when we do the list and when games come out. Yeah. So like there could be a recency bias. Control. Yeah, if they, we, there could be a recency bias if it came out a month before the games cast or the, whatever we do it. But if it's like a week before, it's not getting on the list because we know it's too early to decide. I tried to get so, the room on this list, so I can't I can't 100 percent agree with that. Wait, the room is on the list. Uh-uh. Isn't it? I, mm-mm. Well, I mean, whether I put the room on my list too, isn't it? Yeah, I put the room on my list. You put it on your list. AJ didn't put it on his list, but we had so many games that pushed it way off the list. Uh, I did. I, I did was, actually, I but, but list, we but used. Well, that one's good enough that it, it's the exception of the. Well, world. but that's what I'm saying is that, like, you know, like it, it, it's it's okay when you go, oh my god, this game is great. It's okay to, to to throw it on the list, and and then and then in a few months we go, well, it didn't make this next list, you know. But but it's right. I. But that's why I love. Right. That's why I actually like recency bias when we do the top twenty list because we got right. we get a little snippet of get that time, time right? We of, of that it's... time we we get to go. Oh man, remember when we were super hyped on the room, and it only had four mm-hmm. levels and it didn't have any DLC yet? Remember that <laughs> time and we were fucking we were, we were so in love with it, and, and and then it didn't make the next list. But you know, and, and, can, and I think that's we okay. We're human. And... In the future, we'll say, remember when Skyrim VR was on our list? Those quaint old days. No, that game is is staying. I mean, unless Fallout, <laughs> unless Fallout VR finally comes out, then, uh, it's, you know, I will kick Skyrim off the list for Fallout any second of any yeah. day. No. Just saying. No. Be prepared if it happens. Try to be. I know there. it's at the end of the day, it's all subjective because it's just our opinion. Except for but us. I, I take it pretty serious that. I want to have reasons why I believe and be able to explain why a game should be above another one or something like that, or be on the list or be off the list. You know, I think some games are in danger as well. The The way it could have a negative impact is if there is a game that's truly deserving, but because it's so out of your memory that it doesn't make the list. And I really think that um, something like Gran Turismo is a possible uh, casualty of something like that. But again, we already went through this on the whole debate. Well, I we mean, also correct these things too. When we see that we've made a mistake, when we see that something that didn't get the love it deserved, you know, static, static went, went off the list for, I think a couple, a, a couple different iterations. Yeah, and, right. and I can't, I can't ever see a top 25 list without static on it. I think static is just fucking brilliant. And so like, you know, we, we see that sometimes other games get on the list and maybe that's something that was really good got pushed out and and the, so these are corrections that's why we have to do this every three months to sort of right you know not not only get the new additions in there but correct any of the old mistakes we might have made i love it yeah, i love I think, the, i love I think, the fact that it's always changing like i know even kev Gret, even if it's not like a whole lot even if it's not a completely different top 20 list or like an other top 20 um i think it does change a modest amount each time just enough. We want to, we, it's just minor tweaks every time. And, but we have to go right. through the whole discussion to make sure we tweak it properly. Right. And I think it's well, getting there. I mean, I, I think every time there's something I like about, there's always something I like about the next list that pops up. I think the, the thing really, at, at the end of the day, like we're three people smashing their brains together, which is an, an imperfect system, system to begin with. And then we ask 200 people to help us figure it out yeah. on a live chat. And so at the end of the day, it's not going to be a perfect science. It will never be a perfect science. It is. Yeah. Hopefully it's fun uh, for everybody, though. That's the important thing. Well, yeah, it's fun for us. It's, it's fun, fun for the people watching. Two goals. Fun and, and a good know, list. <laughs> and we're never, like, wrong. Like, these games are always good. It's, it's the, There's never a game that gets on that sucks. You know what I mean? That shouldn't be featured. So, uh, I mean, Five Nights at Freddy's was on there a few times. So I, I'll take, I take it back. But, um <laughs> You know what I mean? I think that there's something honest and and real about it. You know, we, we can't have a perfect list. There never will be a perfect list. Nobody, even one person, couldn't put one together. Let alone three guys arguing with two hundred people spectating. You know, well, like it's, I like it's what you say. There's always going to be there's always going to be somebody that disagrees with something. Not everybody oh, sure. likes the same stuff. Well, yeah. Not everybody. So we really, I mean, like like Brian says all the time, if if this was the Brian Paul list, it'd be all horror games. Yep. I, I mean, I don't even come to the table with all horror games on the list. Right. <laughs> right. Because, because I know better. That's showing willpower right there. <laughs> right. And, that, and that's what we always have this conversation behind the scenes and sometimes publicly where we say, is this, are we bringing our top 25 favorite games to the table or are we, yeah. or are we actually trying to curate a, a good top 25 list for everybody? Yeah. And I think we, th- there's, Flavors. Kind of there's flavors of Dave on his list. There's flavors of AJ on his list. There's all sorts of Brian Paul spewed out over my list. You guys, you guys getting where I'm going with this? 
I ejaculated on my list, and then I brought. Yeah, I got it. He spewed it all over. Okay. Um, so spewed it everywhere. Um, no, but but that's but but that we try to do that even before we get to the top twenty five debate. Um, so you know, it's we we want it to be fun, but we also want it to be a good list. You guys nailed it already. And Dave, I like what you said about it being honest because so many times these conversations happen for like big big websites. You know, IGN has this like gigantic meeting to to, to make their top lists. But we don't get we, we don't get to see that meeting, you know, so all these conversations yeah. happen behind the scenes and then we're just given a list. And I'm like, man, the fun part of the, making the list is making the list. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Like, so I'm so glad we get to share that with everybody. That is awesome. And I mean, and I they help us, people, too. I mean, right. everybody that joins in on that also helps a lot. And I think people feel the same way because like uh, there are always a lot more people tuned in and a lot more views on those shows because it is fun to see the process. It is cool to be a part of it also. Yeah, and those are like four in. hour episodes and we get the longest yeah. view, view we get longer view times for those episodes than any other any other video on the channel people actually tune in and they tune out they tune in for like an hour like yeah. I, I i don't see that on any other video on the entire channel it's amazing that people are watching even one quarter of what we're actually doing here <laughs> yeah. Mo most most of my live streams that are like you know over two hours long the general view time is about 17 minutes like that's the average oh yeah time. no and that's so, that's how YouTube goes yeah, yeah so so people tuning in for a long time is is pretty damn special uh, so thank yeah, you for being I had, part of the community folks yeah people are you guys are great uh, you were about to say something else what was it I was yeah no just <laughs> when I had that other YouTube channel that I had to shut down oh, I think yeah. I mentioned it on a yeah. few uh, of our live streams or something I think I brought it up before yeah but that was months ago anyways um, I would post like a six minute live video it was really cool. And the average view time was like one minute. I was like, you, you, you started watching it and you're like, oh, this is pretty cool. And then you just like didn't right. anymore. Like, what are you doing? That means for um, every person who watched the full six minute video, there were a lot of people watched people, two, seconds two seconds of it. And they were just like, fuck this. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, and so it's weird how, how that all plays out. Yeah. Yeah. All right, you guys, that was a super duper crazy long viewer takeover, but uh, I really mm -hmm. enjoyed doing this. Uh, I want to publicly thank AJ for uh, helping me with my computer problems today. I basically um, just nothing would be happening right now. I'm working on my form review. Viewer takeover almost didn't happen. Uh, basically, uh, for about 15 hours straight, I was troubleshooting and I was on the phone with AJ for all of an hour. Wow. Uh, and, he, and he was able to help me fix my computer over the phone. So I want to say thank you very much. He saved the day. I love you. Dave, I also love you, but you know, that's for a different show. Yeah. You know, I'm a tech support guy too, but it's all good. <laughs> okay. Well, next time when AJ fails me, I will call you. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Okay, guys. Uh, let's see. There's a ton of things to mention before we leave. A little bit of housekeeping. We should have started with that. Um, if you want to introduce next week's show, remember, there's no viewer takeover uh, intro in the queue. So send your short, sweet, seductive. I mean, make if you want to race, man, and talk while you're racing. That was pretty damn cool, David Ballard. Uh, and if you have a cat, show us your cat. Send your video to without parole at more gmail dot com. AJ requests more gameplay intros. It's what, you know, I love David's intro, but keep keep him on the short side, like thirty seconds is, true, is good. True, true, a little know? bit shorter, little but bit shorter. but that was quality. Yeah, I'm not editing that down at all. Yeah, sometimes I do. No. I'm keeping that one. Uh, also, make sure you change your name to GameCat. Uh, do that on YouTube. Do that on Google. However, it works. So sorry, Robert Sullivan. I don't. I, I need to create a tutorial for some people that because I don't know specifically how to do it. It's been a while since I changed my name. Um, but if you change your name to GameCat, make sure you put hashtag GameCat in the comments somewhere below so we can give you a shout out next week's show. Also join our Discord. Discord link is in the description. Uh, that's where we all hang out 24-7. We have this conversation all the time. Uh, and make sure you're part of that conversation. And that's also yes. another place where you can leave your viewer takeover question. Also, make sure you subscribe to Dave at Dave Station VR. That link is in the description. Also, subscribe to AJ at PSVR Underground. That link is in the description. Hopefully, you already subscribed to PSVR without parole because you're here and you're watching this. Although, I don't know. I probably would have unsubscribed about halfway through, to be honest with you. Now, real quick, real quick. What's the Patreon? The, pa the Patreon, patreon.com slash without parole. Games. Yeah. Um, it's guys, what he said. <laughs> we know it's a difficult time for everybody, but if you're able to contribute to the channel, uh, really, we, a dollar a month is all we ask. If we can get thousands of people doing that, um, then, you know, then, then the, the future of without parole will be safe. Uh, and, we, and we thank you very much for your support. Um, it, again, if you, were, if you were one of the people that had to pull your Patreon support recently, we totally understand. This is a tough time. We love you regardless. Yeah, this is... If you have the extra money, we don't yeah. want you sacrificing anything. Yeah. But yeah. if you do, then Brian can afford to get rid of these green lines around yeah, us. Yeah, I gotta figure that out at some point. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna cost a lot of money. The important part, the important part, is that you stick around and you stay a part of our community because we care way more about you than your money. That's what we care about. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, you guys. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, AJ. Uh, this has been another viewer takeover, another successful viewer takeover uh, for PSVR without parole. My name is Brian Paul. 
and we're out. Craziness. Dave looks like some cool uh, Mad Max character. Dave looks like he's going to commit a murder. No, what? he looks too cool to be a murderer. He looks more like, hey, a, like uh, some dude out in the desert. Listen, there ain't no one cooler than murderers. No, honestly, here's what I'll tell you. When I went out to the store like this today, so I so I finally I'm listening to the CBC. I'm you went out in public like this? Yes, earlier, oh, just briefly. I'm so and, happy. Uh, <laughs> and it's a place that I go regularly, so they know me, and they were just like, oh, cool, good on you for doing whatever. Um, but yeah. This is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to wear a mask and gloves. This is a shitty mask that I made out of cutting an old T-shirt. Yeah, it looks like uh, boxers or something. It's not great. Yeah, it's some shitty T-shirt I got from H&M. Um, and it doesn't really work. The ties in the back aren't really good. But uh, this is what I got. I'm waiting for an actual mask. It's kind of badass. One. Yeah, no, I felt like I kind of felt like a badass because here's the two things about it. First of all, oh, it's slipping down. This is a very poorly designed mask. Uh, <laughs> I have to keep tightening it. But basically, here's the two things. Yeah. You look like a badass anyways when you're wearing like a bandana over your mouth. And then second of all, everyone's supposed to be doing their part to combat this whole thing. So right. you, you look like a badass because people are like, this motherfucker is being conscientious. Can I tell you, you know? can I tell you what really makes this badass? What really makes this badass is that before the whole coronavirus outbreak, if you did that in public and walked into oh, any store, ridiculous. you'd be arrested <laughs> on the spot. You'd be like, you are going to fucking rob this bank. You're going to fucking rob this grocery store. You're going to fucking rob whatever store you just walked into. Very but, true. but now you do it and people are like, respect. This guy's yep. great. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>